Well, let's uh, go to uh, our text for this evening, and that is uh, on, I think, your page uh, on the in the Bible, 967, Hebrews 1, verse 1, and through 3. I brought my own, so it might be a little, little different, but that's kind of what I based the sermon off of, so the, then the words that I have in the sermon will be <laughs> what's in the, what I'm reading. Hebrews 1, verse 1 through 3. The Son superior to the angels. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things and through whom He made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact rep representation of His being sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down in, at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Now after uh, I started, uh, or I asked the council that if it was okay if I, I'd, I prepared a sermon, after about two or three, I think I had about three weeks, but I have a whole new respect for you, Pastor. <laughs> There's a lot of work that goes into it, and uh, I learned a lot, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, kudos to you. <laughs> well, the, uh, the book of Hebrews is an uh, apostolic letter. It was written, let me see if I get this right. It was written by a Hebrew to other Hebrews, telling the Hebrews to stop acting like Hebrews. The author of the book of Hebrews is not known. Although either Paul or Barnabas uh, was traditionally accepted as the author, it was believed to be written around 65 AD, and its purpose was to present Jesus Christ as a perfect and superior, as perfect and superior in comparison with anything that Judaism, Judaism and the Old Covenant had to offer. The author was writing to a group of Christians who were under intense persecution. And some of them were slipping back into the rites and rituals of Judaism. He urged them not to turn away from their only hope of salvation. Now in verse 1, the author to the Hebrews begins with a general declaration of excellency of the gospel above that of the law, which he demonstrates from the different way and the manner of God communicating himself and his mind and his will to men in the one and in the other. Both were from God and both were very good. But there is a difference in the way of their coming from God. The way God communicated himself and his will to men in the Old Testament is through prophets. Persons chosen of God and qualified by him for that office of revealing the will of God. God himself gave an account in Numbers 12, verse 6 through 8. And he says, If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known to him in a vision, and I will speak to him in a dream. Not so with my per servant Moses. With him I speak face to face, clearly and not in riddles. God spoke to our forefathers at many times and in various ways. At the many times that God spoke to us, to uh, our forefathers is that he would, God would reveal gradual openings of his mind regarding the, the, the Redeemer. God revealed to a uh, Adam that the Messiah would come from the seed of the woman, to Abraham that he would spring from his loins, to Jacob that he should be of the tribe of Judah, and to David he should be of his house, to Micah that he should be born at Bethlehem, and to Isaiah, that he should be born of a virgin. And we understand the rituals and the ceremonies of Judaism symbolically pointed to the coming of the Messiah. In other words, the rites of Judaism were but a shadow of things to come. In various ways that the writer talks about are visions or dreams, or by his voice, God's voice calling Samuel, by his own hand when he wrote the Ten Commandments on the tables of stone. God me God's method of communicating his mind and will in the New Testament these last days are as, 
as they are called in verse 2, is through Jesus Christ. The times of the gospel are these last days. The gospel of Revelation is the last that we ha are to expect from God. Now we must not expect any new revelation, but only more of the Spirit of Christ to help us better understand what is already revealed. The excel excellency of the gospel revelation above that of the law consists in that. It is the final, the finishing revelation to which nothing is to be added. We are now no longer kept in suspense by expectations of new discoveries, but we can now rejoice in the complete revelation of the will of God, and it's revealed to us by His Son, the most excellent messenger that was ever sent into this world. It's far superior to all the prophets by whom God communicated His will in former times. To continue in verse 2, God appointed His Son heir of all things, through whom he made the universe. Here we have an excellent account of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ, the sovereign Lord of all. All power in heaven and earth is given to him. All judgment is committed to him. By him, God made, him, made the universe, and everything was made by him. And by him, God will make everything anew. I know there's a lot of by hims, but it's very important. By him he rules and governs both. He up upholds everything by his power, and all of creation is laid upon Christ. And it is by Jesus' powerful world that things continue to exist. They could not exist without him. Through Christ's work of redemption, he took the wrath of God upon himself and saved us from God's punishment. None of the ancient prophets held such an office. None of them were sufficient for that. The author shows us the glory of the person of Christ who was able to hold such an office. Verse 3, the Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of His being, sustaining all things by His powerful word. After He had provided for sins, He sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Jesus, he is the brightness of his Father's glory and the exact image of his being. This is a highly description of the glorious Redeemer, an account of his excellency. He is in person the only begotten Son of God. And after he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven as mediator and Redeemer. Now it was by no less person than this that God in these last days spoke to, to men. And since the dignity of the messenger gives authority and excellency to the message, the gospel therefore must by far exceed the law. It's the author's purpose to teach us that Jesus is God and that we must realize that God's Son has always existed. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has always been there. John 1 verse 1 says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Then in verse 14 he writes, The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. He is one God now and always. The Father did not create the Son, but the Father did send the Son into the world. And for a short uh, period of time, people saw God's greatness in Jesus. John 14 verse 9 says, Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus had a perfect character. There is no difference between their thoughts, words, or, words or de decisions. They are perfect alike because there's only one God. And perhaps nowhere in the New Testament does the Old Testament come into focus more than in the book of Hebrews. And it is the bridge that connects them. The writer to Hebrews constantly compares the inadequacies, inadequacies, I had trouble with that word when I was practicing too, of the Old Testament, the sacrifi Old Testament sacrificial system to the perfection and completion in Christ. Let me say that again. 
the writer to the Hebrews constantly compares the inadequacies of the Old Testament's sacrificial system to the perfection and completion in Christ. Where the Old Covenant required continual sacrifices and once a year atonement for sins offered by a, by a priest, the New Covenant provides a once-for-all sacrifice through Christ. And that's found in Hebrews 10, verse 10. And a direct access to the throne of God for all who are in, in Him. The entire book is about Jesus and how He is the guarantee of a new and better covenant. It is essential for every Christian to know that. So I encourage you to read and study the book of Hebrews because in, in it we find a great wealth of doctrine, a refreshing spring of encouragement, and a source of sound practical warnings against sloth, slothfulness in our Christian walk. But most important, we find a magnificently rendered portrait of our Lord Jesus Christ, the author and perfecter of our faith. Now, as you notice, I did not put a sermon title in, uh, in the bulletin. And the reason for that is uh, I wanted to figure that out uh, together. What would you say could we name this sermon? Or could we say about Jesus that we can read in the book of Hebrew? What some suggestions? Anybody? I, I'm sorry, I should have said that uh, I was going to ask a question afterwards. But, but I mean, the, and like the, the book of Hebrews, it's, uh, for me, when I, when I read it, uh, it's, it's like a, a whole sermon. I mean, it's, it's uh, at first it, it, it glorifies uh, who Jesus is, but then it starts giving us all uh, yeah, a great wealth of doctrine on what we should do and what we should be careful of. And I think it's just a, a perfect sermon. Uh, I could have just read the whole book of Hebrews. <laughs> you say, oh, what a great sermon. <laughs> but I, I have a, an idea, and, and it just kind of hit me when I was uh, uh, and looking through all the commentaries and, and, and reading all the, all the things that, that had to do with this, this text. And, and uh, I had no, no idea. I knew there was, was passages in Isaiah that were talking about, about the lamb and how it was going to be led to slaughter. And, and, but I had no idea that all the rituals and the, that that was like a, a shadow of, of, of the Redeemer. Of, and I mean, for me, what this said is that the whole Bible is about Jesus. So what I would call my sermon now, if, if I had to put it in the bulletin, I would say it's, it's all about Jesus. And that's my, uh, my idea. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love for us, that you sent your Son for our salvation. Help us to read your word and help us not to rely on our own understanding, but of the Spirit of Christ who reveals to us the greatest story of redemption. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.